So it's well over a year since I've made an NMR walkthrough. So the last one was number 20. I think I made it in February uh, 2022. So I'm coming back to the playlist. Uh, there's three questions I haven't done yet. So this is the first one. I'll put the link to the NMR playlist at the top of the screen now. So if you wanted to, if you didn't know about them, you can have a look and try some of the other ones. Hopefully you find it useful and uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and let me know what you think. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so we've got quite a lot of data to process. So we've got elemental analysis by mass, we've got the mass spectrum, uh, molecular eye and peak, no fragmentation information, but that's really helpful. We've got the infrared spectrum and we've also got the proton NMR spectrum, but it's being carried out in D2O. I'm just going to go through each one at a time, build up a picture for the molecule, and then come up with a structure. And I think the question says, yeah, we only have to come up with one possible structure, because there will be loads of possible structures. So starting with the elemental analysis by mass, obviously we use that to determine the empirical formula for the compound, and then work out the molecular formula by linking it in with the MR, this uh, molecular ion peak at M over Z164. So very quickly, so percentage divided by the relative atomic mass of the atoms, that gives us the moles. Divide by the smallest gets us the simplest whole number ratio. We don't have to multiply this out. So the empirical formula is C5H6O. So work out the MR of that, it's 82. Compare it to the MR of the actual molecule, which is double, 164. So the ratio gets doubled. So the molecular formula is C10H12O2. Moving on to the infrared spectrum, you'll notice I've put this highlighter line down at 1500 centimetres to the minus one. This is the fingerprint region. It's very, very rare we even bother looking at that. So I would concentrate on this side of the fingerprint line. So we've got two key absorptions here. We've got this one and this one. So we just got our data sheet and establish what they are. And I always say to my students, annotate your spectrum so you can just write on here what the bond is that's causing this absorption, likewise that one. So this absorption at 1700 centimetres to the minus one is a C double bond O. And this broad absorption, sort of going from 2,500 up to 3,300, is the OH, but I would always say of a carboxylic acid, because you can also have an OH of an alcohol, you can have an OH of a phenol. So I would specify what type of OH it is. So it's very safe to say that this compound is a carboxylic acid. So moving on to the main part of the question really is this proton NMR spectrum. And if you notice it says it's been carried out in D2O. So we know that it's a carboxylic acid, we've already established that. So that means we're not going to see the signal for the proton in the COOH group. So hopefully you've seen my other NMR walkthrough videos. Um, if you haven't, I'll put the link to the playlist that they're all in at the top of the screen now. But basically what I do is I take each signal in turn, so we've got four signals, and I go through the same process with each one. So we'll start building up a picture of the uh, compound, and at the end we just put it all together. So we'll start with this signal here. So we need to call this a multiplet. So it's not got these sort of um, fixed patterns. This is a quartet, this is a singlet, this is a doublet. It's quite a sort of messy signal. So this is classed as a multiplet. And we'll notice it's got an area of four. So that means there's four protons in this environment. Now, there's only one thing these can be, um, and that's aromatic protons. So basically, we've got four hydrogens bonded to a benzene ring. Um, because we've got four hydrogens, there must be two substituents on the benzene ring as well. So what I would always do is get my students to come up with that part of the structure. So if we've got four H's directly bonded to a benzene ring, we're gonna have this feature in our molecule. Now we haven't been given any carbon-13 information, so we don't know how many carbon environments are in the molecule, so we don't know where the substituent groups are gonna be, so I've just put them at the top and the bottom of the ring. But the final answer, um, these can be anywhere, basically, these substituent groups. So don't worry about if you haven't put them uh, where I have, basically. Now, the other thing to say about this signal, before I move on to the next one, 
is when you have a multiplet for aromatic protons, you don't have to analyze the splitting pattern. So moving on to the next signal. So this is a quartet, which we're saying is at about 2.7 ppm. You don't have to be absolutely bang on there. So about 2.7 ppm. So the fact that it's a quartet means you've got an adjacent CH3 to the proton causing that signal. The area one means there's just one proton causing the signal. So it's a CH group that's bonded to a CH3. And the shift, there's two possible options. It could be an H to C to C double bond O, which is consistent with if we've got a carboxylic acid or we've got a benzene ring with a carbon off it, so a substituent group with hydrogen on. So that's also consistent with what we know so far. So what I'll do now is draw up um, both of these environments with this uh, aspect on as well. So if it was this environment, we've got the CH, that's causing the signal, remember that hydrogen, adjacent to a CH3 group, that's why it's a quartet, but this is bonded to a C double bond O, H to C to C double bond O. Or we could have a benzene ring with a CH on, so it would be that hydrogen causing the signal adjacent to a CH3 group. So at the moment, both of these are sort of work for the structure. So moving on to this signal now, so this is a singlet and it's at roughly delta 2.3 ppm. So the fact that it's a singlet means there are no adjacent hydrogens. The area 3 means it's a CH3 that's causing the signal and because it's between 2 and 3 ppm, it could be the same environments that we've just seen. So the H to C to C will bond O or the benzene ring CH environment. So again, I'll just draw that up now so that it sort of fits this information. So we could have CH3 group directly bonded to a C double bond O. So there's nothing adjacent to cause splitting, hence the singlet. Or we could have a benzene ring with a CH3 group attached. Now, we can rule one of these out because we know that it's a carboxylic acid. So if it was this, it would have to be ethanoic acid. Well, it can't be because that molecule is finished now. We can't put any more atoms on there. We've got a lot more atoms to go. So it's definitely not that, but it looks like it's that. So moving on to the final signal now, we've got this doublet here at delta 1.5 ppm roughly. So the fact that it's a doublet means it's an adjacent CH group. Area 3 means the CH3 causing the signal and this is just your H to C to R environment. So like I've done with the others, I'll just draw that up now. So that's the feature there. So just CH3 causing the signal adjacent to a single hydrogen. Now we've actually already seen that in something else that we've drawn. So I'll just turn it into the other thing. So we've seen this already, we've established this. So that kind of ties in or confirms what we've already thought. So we're very close to the answer now. So when I put everything together, I'm getting that as a structure. Remember it says suggest one possible structure. So I've gone for the substituents directly opposite each other on the ring, but they could have been there and there, there and there. Okay, so don't worry if you haven't gone directly opposite like me.